Kia ora. No mai hare mai ki Aotearoa. Welcome to New Zealand and to Te Awaroa National Park. This little slice of paradise is teeming with creatures big and small and more adventures than you'll find on any movie screen or storybook. Now I've lived out here in the Wop Wops all my life and never wanted for anything else. In fact, it's practically in my blood. This place and my family go way back. Things have been a little tricky lately, though. It's fast becoming somewhere I don't recognise anymore and I don't like it. That's why I dragged you out here, Hoa. With your help, we're going to wean ourselves off outside money and make the Awaroa model for sustainability the entire South Island can get behind. Right, let's get moving. Glad to see you've arrived in one piece. Josh is my nephew. He just got his licence, and I swear that kid spends more time with his hands on the radio dials than on the steering wheel. I hope he didn't talk your ear off. I've had to rely on him a lot lately since my legs started acting up again. I was planning to head out and meet you today, but here I am at home, propped up on five kinds of pillows. Ah, doctor's orders. Anyway, that's enough chit-chat from me. Head over to the outpost marked on your hunter, mate, and let's get you started. Well, everybody, as you can see, thanks to Expansive Worlds, we have gotten access to the Creator Beta, and to spend some quality time on your own before I, I guess we'll up. let this finish. Your mate, Alejandra, said the two of you were here on holiday? She had nothing but praise for you, by the way. Said you almost single-handedly turned things around for her in Cuatro Colinas. Well, naturally, I have pretty high expectations, but let's take our time getting to know each other first. I'll Arr. admit that it wasn't just her recounting your heroic antics that made me pick up the phone. She said you were, and I quote, stoic, practical, and probably born out in the bush somewhere. Just what I was looking for, in other words. Are we done? I think we're finally done with the uh, opening little cutscene there, so just so we don't spoil any of the missions, I'm going to go ahead and turn them off for this recording. Alright, so as I was saying, thanks to Expansive Worlds, we have access to the Creator Beta, which means I get to show off this amazing map to you guys a little bit early. And I am super, super excited that we've been given this opportunity. It is honestly an amazing thing, and I am super excited to get to show everything off to you guys. All right, so I think I got all of my controls situated. And so I think what we're first gonna do is we're gonna actually walk out here and try to check out that feral goat that made a call. I'm very curious to see what they look like. We keep getting interrupted by things. I'm actually gonna go ahead and turn the clues off because of that. All right, I think we're good now. We got all of the hints and stuff like that turned off. Let's just go ahead and get everything situated the way I normally like to have it, and then we should be good to go. And I'm very, very curious to check out what these feral goats look like. That is absolutely awesome that that's the first thing that we're going to get to see. Because it's by far one of the things that I'm most excited for, so let's go ahead and try to check these guys out. But once again, a big thank you to Expansive Worlds for this opportunity. I was wondering if it was even going to happen this year. It was looking like it wasn't going to, but they ended up surprising us with the opportunity to do it. So I am absolutely stoked to show this off to you guys. All right, we got another mating call. So we are going to be checking out the brand new rifle and stuff like that. Also, uh, they have asked that we don't show off anything past the first mission though. So that's the main reason that we're not gonna be doing any missions during this video or any of the coming videos in the next few days. But we are gonna be able to show off the brand new rifle and all of the species and some of the locations on this map. So that I am super happy about. So while we're stocking up on this thing, we'll take a look at the map and I am really liking the layout so far. This is looking like it's going to be one of the cooler reserves, and we've got a relatively large river, along with quite a few little lakes to check out, so this is actually going to be a pretty fun map to hunt, I think, and we've got the high mountain ranges up here, which I'm assuming the chamois are going to be around these lakes for drinking, so we'll have to go check that out also. But first things first, we got to track down this feral goat and get our first look at that. That's going to be super, super cool to see. Oh, there we have it. Where they go? There's our first look at a feral goat. 
Now, unfortunately, the goats don't have collars, so we are going to have to try and just sneak up close to these guys. And then after we sneak up to these guys, we'll probably go try to find a lodge so that we can get the 303 bolt action rifle. I'm honestly not sure where this thing is gone, so I'm probably just going to try and get it to spook out so we can actually see it. Uh, it's looking like it has continued traveling, though, along with what seems to be some more. Because this definitely looks like more than just one track. And the feral goats are actually a class 3 animal. Wow, that is not what I expected, actually. So that means that for the feral goats, we're going to have to use the Mosin, the 243, guns like that. That's actually kind of crazy. I expected them to be a class 4, but I mean, I guess that makes it a little bit more interesting for sure. Already, just from what I'm seeing of this map, I gotta say, this is an absolutely beautiful map. Just this little forest right here is just absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait to see the rest of the map and get a good idea of what it's going to look like as a whole. But as of now, as first impressions, I'm liking it. And that right there is a level 4 goat. That is cool. That is really cool. Now, I wonder what the horn variation is going to be like. We've seen this horn in the trailers, and now we've seen it in-game. And during the trailer, if you guys remember, there was actually another horn type they showed off. But we'll go ahead and get that guy down. Hopefully that had enough penetration. I just realized they actually changed the gunshot sound for the 243. That is not what it sounded like before, I don't think. That's crazy. That right there is a female goat. Uh, let's go ahead and try to take that down too if we can. Yeah, they definitely changed the sound of the 243. I kind of like that. That actually sounds kind of cool. Oh my gosh. That looks like... Oh, that's the other horn type actually. We definitely want to get that. And here's some more feral goats. Actually got a bunch of them coming through here. That looked like a good hit. There we go, we got our first feral goat down. And we definitely hit a few others. Unfortunately, I don't think those were good shots. I do have the uh, soft point bullets as of now because we haven't got to the lodge yet, but there is our first feral goat. That is so cool. I'm super excited to see what the scoring and stuff is like for these guys. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. This is a bronze scoring 6410. That is so cool. So it's based off of circumference of the first, second, and third quarter and the circumference of the base. Alright then. So it looks like horn length isn't really going to matter. It's all about how girthy the horns are, I guess. Yeah, it seems like it's all about it's all about the circumference of them, so that's kind of interesting. I do like that though. That is so cool looking. Oh, that's actually a really cool one. Uh, I actually want to take that down before we do anything. We just gotta wait for it to go broadside. There's our goat that we killed. But this one right here looks super cool. Oh my gosh, I gotta go look at that goat. That was such a cool looking goat. Here this little guy is. That is such an awesome looking fur variation on these guys. And this is the short haired variation, so they do have short and long hair. Which is one thing that I was really curious if they were going to have. And that is a really awesome looking trophy. I am so happy with these guys so far. They're pretty much everything I expected and wanted out of the feral goats. Now we're just going to have to pay attention to all the different horn variations and stuff like that to see how many of those there is. So far I've seen at least two, maybe three. So here's one of the level fours. And this guy scores 136. It would have been a silver. So it does look like it is going to be based off of horn type too when it comes to the score. Because in classic, this particular horn type would score pretty low. And even though this was a level four, it would have only been a silver. So it does look like we are going to need the bigger horn variations with the uh, the spirally horns in order to actually get a diamond. So that's very interesting. I'm really excited to see 
what the diamonds are going to look like. All right, so we are currently on our way to the first lookout tower. That way we can get an idea of where the lodges are. But there is one of the lakes right next to us. So I'm very curious what animals are going to be drinking at 840. We'll have to see if we can spot anything on the shore here. Now, if the red deer are going to go off of the same time that they do on maps like Quattro Colinas, Parque Fernando, and Hirschfelden, then I would imagine they're going to be drinking at the normal time of 5.30 to 9.30. But, if they have the times of SRP, then I'm kind of curious when they're going to drink. Because we still don't know what the times are going to be like. Okay, so oddly enough, I really don't see anything drinking here. That's making me kind of wonder if the drink times are going to be like SRP because the only time I ever see a map that has nothing drinking at any given time is on SRP, so I'm wondering if that's the way it's going to be. I also just real quickly wanted to say that this video is primarily going to be focused on kind of exploring around a little bit, getting a couple of the outposts unlocked, just getting our first general look at the map, and then once we've done that, the next video that I put up We'll probably be focused on one or two of the species, and that actually is our first call from a chamois. That is going to be pretty cool to take a look at. So once we grab this uh, lookout tower and stuff, we will head over and try to look at that chamois, and I think this is actually the outpost. Yeah, this is the outpost. All right. So I wondered what this little bear patch was, and it is indeed the first outpost. So we'll go ahead and grab that and take a look at the 303 British. And I'm not sure why, but the uh, call indicator thing is stuck on my screen, which is a little bit unfortunate, but it is what it is. I gotta say, though, I'm liking the way these outposts look. This is really nice. Now, I wonder where we go to get our weapons. Oh, here it is. It's actually right on the side of the shack. Let's take a look at the 303 rifle. Oh my gosh, it is. It's exactly what I was hoping it would be. This is the modernized version of a 303. That is absolutely awesome. Honestly, this is everything I could have asked for in a 303 British. That is so cool. Let's get some ammo for this thing. And it's classes 4 to 8, so that's going to be really nice to use on things. I'm super excited now. My gosh, that is awesome. That is so awesome. Alright, so I'm not seeing any new collars, but the boar collar does attract the feral pigs. So it's possible that some of these other ones have been changed to attract other deer. And, oh wow, the red deer collar actually attracts the Sika deer. So we definitely want to pick that up. Uh, we'll kind of go through the rest of these and see if anything else has changed with the calls. That's really cool though that the Sika deer do have a collar that works for them. And it looks like the grunt collar also works. So that is really good to know. And in fact, I think the grunt collar is going to be better because it's got a slightly larger range. So we probably will want to use that. Although the red deer collar has a higher attraction rating. You can also use the deer bleat collar on the Sika. And the snort wheeze collar also works on the Sika. So they've got four different collars that you can use for them. That's kind of crazy. I don't think I've ever seen that before. Four different collars being usable on them. Uh, it doesn't look like there's any new scents or anything like that. Uh, I don't see any new decoys at all. No consumables. Uh, doesn't look like any new clothing. Uh, obviously, there's not going to be any new backpacks. No new optics. Uh, tents, blinds, all this seems to be the same as would be expected. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the sites for everything. Looks like everything is looking about the way it was before. I'm not really seeing anything changed here. All right, so yeah, there's nothing else new. However, there is a laminated 303 that we can unlock, it looks like. I'm guessing this will be from the missions. They did mention there was an unlockable gun through one of the missions, and I'm guessing this is it. So it is just another variation of the 303. I know a lot of people were wanting a skin for the 243 or the 223 or one of those rifles, but it does look like it is for the 303 laminated, which is still pretty cool. But honestly, I think this is still my favorite variation so far. We will have to go out and check it out. All right, everybody, it is now time to look at the 303 British with our first look at it. And that is an awesome looking gun. We can't really see too much of it as of now, but that looks really good from what we can see. 
Now let's go ahead and go find something to shoot with it because I really want to hear the sound of this thing, but I don't want to just fire randomly. I kind of want to actually go for something. So we will head out and try to find either a red deer or possibly a feral pig if they're a high enough class. I don't really know if they are. So we'll have to go check that out. We're probably going to go ahead and unlock this watchtower real quickly. And then after that, we'll head out and look at some of the different lakes and see if there's any animals around them. So we are now at the top of the watchtower and this looks really awesome. I really like the design they went for with this. It's a lot different from other maps and just looks really, really cool in general. We'll go ahead and unlock that. And after it gets done with this little cutscene, we'll try to look over towards where the chamois were and see if we can spot any. There we go. There's our first look at a chamois. That is really cool. This one is a level three. Uh, if you guys remember, they posted on their social medias the different classes and stuff for some of the animals. And I believe the chamois was the first one they did. And these guys go up to level five. So this one right here isn't anything too big, which means I might just go ahead and use the 303 British on it just so we can actually try this thing out. But so far, it looks like we have two different animals so far that are class three. So this might be the first map in a while where the 243 and similar guns are actually going to get used quite a bit. So that's kind of interesting. But anyway, let's go ahead and use the 303 British so we can get a feel for how this thing sounds. Oh my gosh. I don't mind the terrible shooting, but oh my gosh, this gun sounds amazing. I am more than happy with this. This is actually fantastic. Let's hear that again. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm in love with this gun already. This thing is absolutely amazing. That is so cool. And we're going to get our first look at a chamois now too. Now, since we did shoot this with the wrong ammo, we're not going to get full score, but that is pretty cool. So they are scored on horn length, overall spread, circumference, and height of horns. So that seems pretty standard for the most part. But that one is a level 2 male with the brown fur variation, so they are going to have different variations, which is nice. We did hit this one when it was running. It was like a foot shot, though, so I'm not sure how quickly it'll die. I would imagine it would be pretty quickly just because of the rifle we're using, but... We're going to go track that down. Uh, I don't remember which level this one was, but I definitely want to get a look at it. Oh, that is unfortunate. So it ran out of the reserve. Um, I'm not sure how that is out of the reserve, but all right, I guess it is. I don't know where the borders actually are. It's kind of hard to tell. I guess this is the edge of the map right here. That's a little strange. I was kind of hoping that it would be a little bit more noticeable where the borders of the map actually were, but it is what it is. We'll just go ahead and run back to the lodge, I guess. All right, so I think to uh, kind of end things off, we're going to go ahead and drive up the road. I think there's got to be an outpost right here based off of the way the road looks. So we're going to drive up there, see if there's an outpost, and then I'll catch you guys back there. Okay, so I actually found one of the feral goats that we shot earlier. Uh, <laughs> well then, not a great shot, but there it is. The brown fur variation on the feral goats. Not too bad. I'm liking the way that looks also. Did not expect to uh, come across that. <laughs> oh, there's actually a turkey. Well, we found some turkeys and more tracks from feral goats. And we're almost to the spot I was trying to get to, and it is indeed a lodge. So that is good to know. I kind of figured there'd be a lodge here just because of the way the road was going. And it also looks like we spooked off these feral goats along with those turkeys that were flying away. So maybe we'll be able to catch up to some of them and get another look at the feral goats. All right, let's go ahead and unlock lodge number two. So we are now very, very close to the water. Hopefully we can find ourselves some drink zones along here because I do want to see what drinks at what time. Uh, but we'll probably save that for another video because I think we're going to go ahead and try to find another feral goat and probably just call it there. There we have it. There is another feral goat. We still have the 243 with us, so 
If it goes broadside, we will try to get a shot on it. That should be good enough. That'll take it down at least. I don't know if we hit vitals. It's not looking like we did, but we definitely got a shot into it. I'm honestly just so used to using polymer tips, I expected that to hit for some reason. But because we're still on the soft points, I forgot to actually pick up the poly tips. That did not penetrate as far as I needed it to, which is a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. We probably still got a non-vital hit. And yeah, it died, so we definitely got something. Maybe even a single lung if we're lucky. And yeah, that actually didn't run too far. I wouldn't be surprised if it is a single lung. So let's go ahead and pick this little guy up. This is a level 3 male. And it was intestine stomach, so that's unfortunate, but only would have been a silver regardless. But that is pretty cool. I definitely am liking these feral goats so far. And this one's kind of fluffy, honestly. That is a very fluffy looking feral goat. Okay, we actually have our first feed zone right here. Let's see what it is and what time they feed at. So this is a chamois zone from 8 a.m. to 12.30. That seems like a relatively normal feed zone. That's making me think that this map might have the typical feeding and drinking times, but it's hard to say as of now. Wait, disturbed vegetation honey tones. Honey tones must be a fur variation for the chamois. And it is. Question is, is that a normal common fur variation or is that a rare one and yeah this other one says honey tones also so I guess it is just the normal fur variation for them it looks like there's also a feral goat zone around here because we have disturbed vegetation from one so it seems like there's a couple different feed zones right next to this lodge and yeah here it is this is another feed zone for chamois for a second, I thought it was going to be feral goats, but it's another chamois one. And yeah, we got a chamois mating call. And right there, we've got a feral goat fleeing off. And another feral goat right there. You know, just because I want to use the 303 British again. Let's go ahead and blast this. Oh, that gun is so nice. I am absolutely loving this thing. I'm still a little bit sad that these feral goats are class 3 and not class 4, but I mean it is what it is. I was just really hoping we could use the 303 British on them, but sadly we cannot. But here is the feral goat that we just shot. Let's go ahead and take a look. 70.50 on the score for this one since it is a female. But that is super cool looking. I'm loving these feral goats. They look so, so nice. Alright everybody, well I hope you enjoyed this first look at the brand new map. Uh, I, let me see if I can pronounce this correctly. I think it's uh, Tiawora. I believe that is how it's supposed to be pronounced, but uh, once again thank you to Expansive Worlds for giving me this amazing opportunity. And in the next few days we will be showing off a lot more of the new content. So if there's anything in particular you guys would like to see me show off, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I am for sure going to be looking for the Sika deer and try to do more of all the other new species too, but I definitely want to get a hold of a couple Sika deer and also kind of find some of the need zones so I can get, a, get an idea of what the drink times and stuff are going to be like for this map. But as of now, with just a first look at this map, I gotta say, this has to be the best looking map yet. It's just absolutely beautiful. And this might be my new favorite rifle also. The 303 British is super, super awesome. One of the best sounding guns in the game. And from what I've seen, it's got quite a bit of power too. But the real test is going to be taking on some red deer with it, which I am super excited to be able to finally do. I think before we end, we'll real quickly look at the penetration and stuff and the other stats for it. So 55 accuracy, 64 recoil, 67 hip shot, and 49 on the reload speed. So none of this stuff really matters too much from what I've seen. It doesn't seem like that's really too big of a deal, but we'll go ahead and check out the ammo for it. And the 303 British poly tips are 40 penetration and 12 expansion. So let's go ahead and compare those to the 30-06 and see what the differences are. So it actually has, wow, it's got the same penetration as 30 out 6, but with one more expansion, which means 303, I think is going to be the new king. 
I think we've got a new best gun for class 4 to 8. Obviously, if you're wanting quicker follow-up shots, the M1 is still going to be better. But the 303 is by far the most powerful 4 to 8 weapon. That is really awesome. That is really cool. It's about in line with what it should be because the 303 British is very similar to a 308 for those of you that don't know. So that's pretty awesome. I'm really glad that they did that. As far as the soft points go, 53 expansion and 20 penetration versus 50 expansion and 19 penetration on the 30-06. So the soft points are way better than the 30-06 uh, soft points. Uh, poly tips are just slightly better, but that is awesome. Really, really happy. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel. I do post daily videos along with five live streams a week, and you guys are going to be seeing a ton of videos on this reserve in the next few coming days. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, thank you guys for watching once again, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace!